What's up guys, it's CJ Lipstrew from Pocketnow.com and today we're looking at the newest version of Fire Slave's Windows Phone 7 theme for the Throttle Launcher user interface on Windows Phone 6.5. We actually took a look at this theme way back in its infancy but now the developer has reworked it with new features and better optimizations. So let's check it out. Alright, before I begin, I just want to mention that I'm running this on an HTC Touch Pro 2, so it may not function as smoothly as it would on a more powerful device like the HD2. But that being said, it still works fairly well. So this theme aims to emulate the look of Windows Phone 7, and as you can see, it does a remarkable job as far as the appearance goes. We have the familiar start screen with the blue tiles. Let's go ahead and scroll down. You can see that some of the tiles actually animate which is a nice touch. If we go down you can see that there is some bounce back action which lets us know that we came to the end of the grid. If you look over here we have these three dots. It lets us know that there's a hidden menu here. Uh, unlike on the actual Windows Phone 7 OS uh, where we have this integrated in many areas of the operating system, uh, in this theme it's only available in a couple uh, pages. So on the start screen we can access the start menu. This little magnifying glass uh, takes us to a simple Bing search page. The little wrench icon will take you to the throttle launcher interface settings and the plus icon will allow you to add, remove, or configure your tiles. So we'll minimize that. Uh, and just to let you know, you can add specific contacts or programs to your start page. Let's go back up here and if you swipe to the side you can actually access all of your programs which is very reminiscent of uh, the Windows Phone 7 OS. We can also press this arrow to go back. Now let's take a closer look at some of these start screen tiles. The phone tile just launches your default Windows Mobile dialer. Uh, the messaging and email tiles will do the same with your standard messaging applications. If we go to the people tile up here, it's actually sort of a mini people hub. You can see that the tile is animated with some of my contacts. If we tap on them, it'll take us to this page which lists all of my favorites. I can add and remove uh, contacts with these buttons down here. Not too much functionality beyond that, but it's nice that we can drill down a little deeper into the theme. Let's go back and move on to the pictures hub and it looks like it just shows us uh, a grid of some of our pictures on the device. Now you can set the directory for the images that you want to be displayed. Uh, also notice that it used one of my pictures as the background which is a nice touch. Let's go over here and pull up this hidden menu. If we press this button on the very right it'll refresh all of our pictures to make sure uh, the recent images are displayed. I'm not sure what these two buttons in the middle do and the very left button has a camera icon because it launches your camera application so that you can take pictures which is good as well. Let's go ahead and go back and move on here. The Xbox Live tile. Now obviously it's not going to have any Xbox Live integration uh, but it will let you store all of your shortcuts to games in one place so it's sort of like an organizing uh, hub so to speak. You can add or remove them pressing this button. I didn't have too many games on my device, so I just added some random shortcuts. You can also change the avatar in the background. It's not animated or anything like that, but it is a static, customizable avatar. So let's go back. Uh, this tile over here is just to launch your owner's information. Below that, we have a music hub. So here we can add different items. I have TCPMP and the Windows Media Player we swipe over to the side, we actually get this nice little uh, interface for uh, media controls. So I have this connected to Windows Media Player. It's also compatible with Nitrogen and I believe Slide to Play. So we have volume up and down and we can switch tracks and press play. Let's get out of here and go to the calendar. So a simple calendar, it allows us to jump through the years by swiping up or down and we can jump through months by swiping left or right. Let's go out of here and down here I just have a, a contact shortcut 
that I set for demonstration purposes. So let's swipe back and go to the settings and you can see it has this nice Windows Phone 7 style uh, settings menu. We'll go and start at the beginning. So under general these are a bunch of Windows Mobile uh, standard settings that you might want to access. Let's go over to the theme settings. Now this is where it gets sort of interesting. We can actually change to a light theme just like on uh, the actual Windows Phone 7. So now everything has a white background. And we can change the accent color. It looks like we have a nice assortment of colors. I'm going to go with red. That seems to be uh, pretty popular with the white background. And here we have some uh, animation settings for the people tile. And then we can set our music player. So let's jump back to the start screen so you can see what the change in theme looks like. And there is one last feature that I forgot to mention earlier in the video. You can actually tap and hold on any of these tiles to move them around and then place them wherever you'd like. Let's go ahead and try that again with this games tile. And we'll drop it down over here like so. Very cool. So that about does it for this video, but I'll post instructions on pocketnow.com as to how you can get this theme up and running on the previous generation of Windows phones, so be sure to hit the link in the description for that. As always, you can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash pocketnowtweets. Thanks for watching.